Thanks, guys. Well, welcome into our courtside show. I'm Mary Kate Harian. He is Zach Mackey. Before we get into the men's matchup on Saturday night, the Iowa women's team ended their losing streak and did it in a pretty fun way. Last night, fans piled into Carver as the women's basketball team put out their best performance of the season against number 12 ranked Ohio State. Senior Chase Coley scored Iowa's first points of the night along with sophomore Kathleen Doyle who displayed her leadership skills throughout the game and ended with 25 points. Junior Megan Gustin led the Hawks to a 103-89 win over the Buckeyes as she gathered 29 points and 5 rebounds while competing alongside a fellow Big Ten star, Kelsey Mitchell, who scored 27 points for Ohio State. I'm incredibly proud of this group. Um, they continue to amaze me. Uh, you know something, we had lost three in a row and they never lost faith and they never lost belief in each other and that's why we came out and played the way we did today. You know, Ohio State's a great team. Um, Kelsey Mitchell's a great player so I think tonight was a team effort and I really love that. I just have to give a shout out to these two because you know I didn't get my rebounds but they filled in for me and that's what a team does for each other. They're always there for each other. They're always backing each other up so thanks guys. Yeah. I just treated it like any other game. Um, I do kind of live for those competitive matchups but um, that's more of a side note. Um, just focus on getting the win and we we did that so I couldn't be happier and more proud of my teammates. I mean the energy that they came out with I mean wow. even from the shoot around that we were at was incredible and I think they were just so much more mentally and physically prepared than Ohio State came to the game. Yeah they needed that after dropping the last mm -hmm. couple of games you had the two best of the Big Ten no one better than Megan Gustafson and Kelsey Mitchell so yeah. it was fun to get to see them go back and forth. I will put up the most points by 20 that they had ever put up at a Big Ten contest this season so the shots were really falling yesterday for the women's side. All right, well, switching over to the men, they finally, finally, finally got their second Big Ten win of the season against Wisconsin on Tuesday night, and they were due. Five of the guys scored in double figures. Garza and Cook both scored 17. Garza also had 16 rebounds, which is the most in a single game by a Hawkeye since 2016. Well, Hannon also had a double-double and looked so strong on the court. Zach, are we thinking this could possibly be that turnaround that everyone has been waiting for? Well, the thing is, is that with a young group, you're going to have really high highs and really low lows. Yeah. And in this same week, you could look at a Purdue team mm -hmm. who's at the top of the Big Ten who really gave it to Iowa, or a team like Wisconsin who's in the middle of the Big Ten, and Iowa was able to handle them pretty well uh, in that contest just a couple of days ago. So it's hard to find that happy medium. I think with a group like this, you can't get too high, you can't get too low, because, again, the losses are never as bad as they seem, and the wins <laughs> aren't as good as they seem either. Yeah, all right, well... Let's move on to Nebraska. They are 15 and 8 overall and 6 and 4 in conference play. Fun fact though, they are 11 and 1 at home with their only loss being to number 5 Kansas. So I was going into probably a little bit of a hostile environment. They are a three-point shooting team, but they are last in the Big Ten in rebounding, which should hurt them against Iowa. But they do have three guys scoring in double digits, Palmer, Copeland, and Watson. What is Iowa going to have to do to get this win? Well, I think they're going to have to be able to uh, establish themselves down inside and really uh, Nebraska doesn't have a lot but besides those starting five mm -hmm. that you talked about. Of their last, of their 60 points scored against Rutgers just two days ago, 59 of them were from the starting five. Yeah. So they, they haven't had a lot of production from the bench. So if Iowa can get them out, make them run a little bit, get them a little tired, have to use that bench a little bit more. But it is. It's going to be a hostile environment. These guys, so far this season, when they have been in those type of environments, it hasn't worked out well. So we'll see if, like you said, they haven't turned the corner now. Well, not only does the team need this win, but Fran does, because if he wins, this will be his 400th win of his career as head coach at Iowa. And right now, what you're seeing is my favorite Fran moment just from this season. He is just such an electric coach. You want him. I would want him coaching yeah. me. Look at him. Come on. He defends his guys. Yeah, he does. He's so fun to watch. And, you know, although the season hasn't been promising, he's had a pretty solid career at Iowa. No, he has. He's yeah. really done a great job. People forget where this program was at whenever Fran McCaffrey took it over. And yeah. yet they want every year to be up here. And you're not yeah. going to be able to produce that every year. But you can see where they're building towards the future. It's a very young lineup right now. And the future looks really good. All right. We did three keys last week. What is your major key, main key? Just one? Yeah, just All one. Right. Give me one. All right. I, I already kind of mentioned it a little bit. But that presence down to the paint. They've yeah. got Isaiah Roby, does Nebraska. They've got some forces down inside. So can Tyler Cook and Luca Garza. Those two, when they do well, it seems yeah. like Iowa does we well. We saw that against Wisconsin. Mine is just going to be they got to get that quick start like they did against Wisconsin. Yeah. And hopefully that momentum will carry over to tomorrow night's game because they need it. Number three, number three win. But that is it for us. Tip-off is at 7 p.m. inside of Pinnacle Bank Arena and will be broadcast on Big Ten Network. Come back on Monday for highlights from the game. Guys, back over to you.